Hi, in this video we're going to show you a free backup tool you could use to backup your files and folders. So it's called FBackup. So there are two versions technically, even though the uh, pay for version has a different name, but it has a lot more features. So if you go to their website, you can see the different features here. So FBackup is free. And then Backup for All is a professional one here. And it shows you the differences here, such as cloud backups. You could back up to a lot more cloud platforms on the pay for version. FTP, both of them you can back up to CD and DVD, local and network drives, external drives, and then both you could back up files from your Google Drive and Dropbox. There's some differences on the interface here, and the types of backup. So you could do block level backups on the pay for version. And you could pause the backups on the pay for version and also encrypt it. And the backup types. You do full backups and mirrored backups on the free version. But you can't do incremental and differential on the free version. So they both use zip file format. But you could split the zip files on the pay for version. You could test your backups on the free version as well. And here's the types of restore. So, right now, the full version is only $40, so it's not too bad if you need these extra features. But if you're just doing a basic backups, the free version might be fine. All right, so I have it installed here. So, you can see the interface is pretty simple. You just have your tabs up here. So, they have the section for plugins if you want to check that out. But a lot of them you need the uh, pay for version to use. So if you want to do some browser backups or any of these other apps, that type of thing, you could do that as well. Then you have your main job section here. You have your layout section here. If you want to see the navigation pane, your backup view, and then discount will take you to the website if you want to buy it. Then you have your sections down here for jobs, failed, warnings, and so on. All right, so this does not have any backup jobs at the moment. All right, so what I'm going to be doing is backing up to this backups folder on the E drive there. All right, so there's a couple ways you could do it. There is a standard wizard and advanced mode, so we'll do one of each so you can see the difference here. All right, so we'll start with a new backup here. All right, we're just going to do the simple wizard first. So we're going to pick a local hard drive. You could also do CD, DVD, network, or online. And if you do online, you could do Google Drive and Dropbox. You just need to authenticate your account. So when you click on Choose Account, it'll take you to the website. Then you could give uh, Google Drive or Dropbox permission to be used with F Backup to back up to that platform. And then, of course, network. You'll need to have your network information to back up over the network. All right, we're just going to do local hard drive. So we have our data drive here. We'll browse to that folder. Okay, then we'll click on Next. All right, so it gives you some sources here. So it gives you some suggested sources here, like documents and pictures, Outlook, and so on. Or you could just pick from here if you want to pick a specific folder. You know, let's say you want to do documents, you can either check it here or go to Users, your username, and pick documents from there. So we'll just do the simple My Documents from here. And you can see it gives you the path right there. And it actually shows you the documents, and you could Select or deselect ones you don't want to back up. It'll select them all by default. And then if you click this change source selection style, it'll kind of get rid of this interface here for the older version. So you probably want to just leave that alone. All right, we'll click on Next. All right, so by default, it applies automatic filters here. So it's not going to back up temporary files, but it will back up documents, images, and music files. And then you could also add some inclusions or exclusions. You could edit this, copy, delete it, change this from include to exclude, and so on. And then here's the advanced mode, which we'll be doing next. And if you uh, bring this over, you can kind of see what it's going to do. All right, we'll click on next. All right, so we have the option to make a full backup or make a mirror. So we want to back it up rather than mirror the source and the destination. And then you could add a password if you want to encrypt it. We'll leave that alone. 
go next. So now you can do it manually, or you can kind of schedule it here. So if you click on this, you could pick what days. Like that. We'll just do manually. Click on next. We'll call this documents. Then you can even change the icon for your backup. Let's say you find something that looks like documents, like that. All right, so we'll click on save here. It's save and run, or just save it. We'll just save it for now. All right, so now we have our job here ready to run. So you can back up, test, or restore. We can't test it because it's not completed yet. We can't restore it because it hasn't been completed yet. And you can even create a shortcut to your backup if you click on that. And click OK. It'll give you an option to make a shortcut. You can stick it on your desktop and then run it from there. Then you could open it, delete it, duplicate it, check the properties of it. So you have some settings here. You want to change the name, the icon, all the other options here that we saw before while we were setting it up. So you can see these ones with a dollar sign. That means that's for the professional version, so you can't use those. You can even schedule it, and then the email option is for the professional version. All right, so let's go ahead and run it by clicking on Backup. Then you have an option to shut down the computer when finished. All right, so the backup was successful. You could view any messages here. You could click on this to open the log for this backup if you want to read through that, check it out. All right, so now let's go to the folder here. So here's our backup, FKC file for that, and then a zip file for that. One thing you'll notice though, when you try and open the zip file, it doesn't show anything in there, even though if you go to the properties of it, there is some size to it. All right, so that backup is done, and we can run it again as needed. Then here's the test option. Let's run that. We'll do a quick test. All right, so the test was successful, showing that our backup is okay. Okay, so now let's do a quick restore. So we have some options here to restore, latest version and latest version 2, which we'll see by going here. All right, we could do the original location or a different location. So let's just stick it on the desktop just to check it out here. So you have the latest version of all files, or you could choose files and restore the latest version. So if we do that, then you could actually choose which ones you want to restore. And then you have this option here, choose filter files and then restore. Then once you click on next, you could add some filters to include or exclude. All right, so let's go back again. And then you could also check this option to restore excluded and deleted files. But we're just going to do everything here. Click on finish. All right, so that's done. So let's go to the desktop, see what we have here. There's our My Documents folder with all of our documents in there. Okay, so let's do a new one with the advanced method. Put it in the same location here. Go to the local drive again. But now we can click on advanced mode down here. That will kind of close and reopen a new window here. All right, so we have the options here for local disk, external disk, optical, removable network. You can see FTP is great out there because that's a premium version and if you had the premium version you could do more than Google Drive and Dropbox so here's our destination here we have our sources here we could add a folder Let's say we're going to do pictures this time or add specific files add plugins and so on any filters we want to apply same ones that we saw before full or mirror like we saw before, 
You can't do the smart differential incremental unless you have the pay for version. And then you can customize the prefix of the backup file. Right there. That has one underscore my documents. You could change that to something else if you want. Compression options and encryption options. And then you could split the files as well. Some advanced options here to test right afterwards. We'll turn that off. Backup empty folders, yes or no. Then we have the scheduler here if you want to schedule it. And then the same email option. All right, so this time we'll just click on save and run, do it right from here. You can see it has the default icon because we didn't change the icon. All right, so that's complete. And we could look at the log again if we want. Test it again if we want. And then once again, we could go to restore and do the same type of restoration. So you can see the simple wizard and the advanced wizard, they're not too different, but depends on which way it works the best for you. All right, let's check out the backup file real quick here. All right, so it's called New Backup, since I forgot to change the name. And it just gave it that default name for that as well. And of course, you could change that if you want. So if we go to the Properties, You can change it right here. Change that to pictures and so on. Change the icon. Don't see anything that really looks like a picture, but you can add icons as well. So let's just uh, use this arrow for now. All right, so that changed it there. But it's not going to change the backup file name because it's already been ran. So just keep that in mind. You want to look for that when you're creating your backup job so it has the proper name so it makes it easier to find. But if you forget to change the file name, you could always come back here and at least change the job name so it makes more sense. All right, so we have our list over here for all jobs, failed, any warnings, anything running, anything scheduled, but we don't have anything there at all to look at since we didn't apply any of these settings. And then at the very top here, we have some other quick access icons for new job run a backup, and then you could add some other features to the quick access toolbar. It's kind of like you know Microsoft Office has. And you could even show it below the ribbon, so it looks like they took that from uh, Office itself. And there's even the option to minimize the ribbon. So if you click on Customize, then you could add some custom icons up here that you might not have over here. So quite a bit of icons to choose from. So let's say we wanted to have test. Now we have the test option there. We could just test right from the quick access bar. All right, so there is your basic overview of F Backup. So I will put a link in the description where you could download it and then you can try it out. And if you need the extra features, you could go ahead and buy the professional version. All right, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe.